Hello and welcome to our second video on quadratic inequalities. In the last video we introduced some basic concepts. Here I'm going to um, try and show you some other examples you might see and I don't want these to throw you off so I want you to be ready for them. Um, what kind of examples could you also see other than the basic quadratic inequality ones? Well one I think you might have to deal with is when you have a negative coefficient on our x squared value like this. Let's say it said negative x squared minus x is less than negative 2. And here we have to solve for this quadratic inequality. So the first step, very similar to the last video, we want to rewrite this so um, it's in relation to 0. And to do that, to write it in relation to 0, I'm going to add my constant to both sides, and then I get negative x squared minus x plus 2 is less than 0 right, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And now I have this term. Well here I don't want to deal with a negative a term, so I'm going to divide everything here by negative 1. And this is where one of those properties of inequalities, right, really pops up. We're dividing by a negative 1 here. What do we do? Well, first let's sort this out. Negative x squared divided by negative 1, well, that's positive x squared, right? take a negative 1 divided by another negative 1, it's positive. Negative x divided by negative 1, we want to divide each of these parts by negative 1, that's positive x, okay? 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. 0 is divided by anything, it's still 0. But what happens to the inequality sign? Well, since we're dividing by a negative, that also switches direction. And this is a, a basic property in inequalities, you could do a quick test, right? Let's say I had a simple inequality. 4 is bigger than 1. Well, if I divide up both sides by negative 1, I would get negative 4, right? 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. And then I would get 1 divided by negative 1, which is still negative. Well, it's negative 1. Now, this new inequality right here, well, is it still true if I left the sign like this? That would mean that negative 4 is bigger than negative 1, but it's not. In fact, it's reversed, right? Negative 1 on a number line is closer to 0 than negative 4. It has a higher value. So by dividing by negative 1, we kind of flipped our inequality. And the same thing applies here. So we have to be careful and make sure we reverse that inequality sign. Now I think we're ready to use some of those strategies from the last video. So what do we do? Well, we have x squared plus x minus 2 is greater than 0. So we factor this out. And what are we going to get? Well, we're looking for two factors of negative 2 that add up to, that add up to 1. And I'm going to use, of course, you know, positive 2 and negative 1. Positive 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. But if you add them up, you also get positive 1. And you factor this out. It has to be greater than 0. And there are only two ways to get a positive product, right? Because so we're going to multiply these two. And we have to get a positive product. How do I know that? Well, that's what this says right here, right? We're multiplying one term by another, and it's bigger than zero. Bigger than zero means it's a positive product. So what do we do? Well, if it's a positive product, the only ways that can happen is if both terms, one, two are both positive, or if they're both a negative term, right? Because negative times negative is also a positive. So let's assume they're both positive. That means x plus two would be greater than zero. And it means that x minus one would also be greater than zero. If I solve for x here, I get x is bigger than negative two, right? And here, x is bigger than one. But we can combine these two because we're saying, well, if they're both positive, then x has to be bigger than negative 2, and it has to be bigger than 1. Okay, so if it's bigger than negative 2, and it's bigger than 1, I'm just going to choose everything bigger than 1. Everything bigger than 1 is already bigger than negative 2. So if they're both positive, my solution set with then would be x is bigger than 1. right? That also it already includes this one. So why say it twice, right? There are some values here that are bigger than negative 2 that aren't also bigger than 1, 
like 0, for example. So we can't just pick every variable that's bigger than negative 2, but we can pick every, every value, excuse me, that's bigger than 1. And the other, the other set is if they're both negative. Because if they're both negative, this is, if this is negative, and so is this, their product will be positive. So we say, okay, x plus 2 is now less than 0, and x minus 1 is also less than 0. So what does that mean? Well, here if I solve, x is less than negative 2, and here x is less than 1. What is less than negative 2 and less than 1? Right? Well, that's anything less than negative 2. So in this case, I'll choose this. x is less than negative 2. And we can graph this on a number line to make sense of what's happening. We're saying that this quadratic inequality has two solutions. x can be anything bigger than 1. So we plot 1, x is anything bigger than 1. Or x could be anything less than negative 2. That's the key word there, or, right? Or it's anything less than negative 2. So in both cases, of course, there's no number that's bigger than 1 and less than negative 2, right? It can't, a number can't be bigger than 1 and less than negative 2 at the same time. So we say that it's 1 or the other. And that's our solution set to this inequality. What else might they throw at you? Well, other than negative, um, or dividing and multiplying by negative values, they might give you a coefficient that's not 1. So maybe they'll give you something like negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 24 is less than 0. Well, now we have a negative 2 here, and that's our coefficient. So it's negative and it's not 1. What do I do? Well, when that happens, I try and get rid of that 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 coefficient, uh, that a co coefficient value that's bigger than one. To do that, I just divide by negative two. But of course, I have to divide everything by negative two. I want this to be balanced, and that will be rewritten as well. What's negative two x squared divided by negative two? Well, negative two divided by negative two is just one. So x squared plus well, now it's actually I'm gonna it's going to be minus, right? Because 2 divided, 2x divided by negative 2 is just negative 1 or, or negative x. And then 24 divided by negative 2 is negative 12. And of course, we have to be careful here. <coughs> Excuse me. We're dividing both sides by negative 2, so our inequality direction changes. And 0 divided by anything is just 0. So I guess my strategy here is, if I can, take this term, this coefficient, and divide everything by it. By doing that, you'll get rid of this coefficient bigger than 1. The only problem is, is if the b or c terms are not multiples of negative 2. Like if b was a 3 over here, what would we do? Well, we get a fraction. And we could still work with it, but it probably wouldn't be as nice. So here, it works very nicely. We can factor, right? In this case, I want to look for factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1. Well, negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. And if I add up negative 4 and 3, that's still negative 1. So this works, right? This is our factored form. Now when we solve, one of two things is going to happen. Either x plus 3 and, right, oops, and x minus 4 are positive, right, they're both greater than 0, or they're both negative. So x plus 3 would be less than 0, and x minus 4, some other number, will also be less than 0. So if we solve for x in each of these cases, on this side we'll get x is bigger than negative 3, and x is bigger than 4. So I combine these two into this any number bigger than 4, just like I've been doing all along. So there's the 4 x is anything bigger than it. And of course I chose x is bigger than 4 because any number that's bigger than 4 is also already bigger than negative 3. So you want to try and combine these inequalities. Here, if I saw it, x is less than negative 3 and x is less than 4. So x is anything less than negative 3 and less than 4. So now I'm going to pick anything less than negative 3, right? Because any number that's less than negative 3 is already less than 4. And if I plot this out, you can even see it. Here's the 4, and let's say this is 0, negative 3, 
any number that's less than negative 3, all of these numbers are already less than 4. Of course, every number less than 4, like 0, is not less than negative 3. So we can't really use this inequality here. It wouldn't include every value. We want to use this one right here. x is anything less than negative 3. So for this kind of an inequality, your answer could be written as x is less than negative 3 or x is bigger than 4. And you can even combine these onto onto one number line, right? Let's say this is, sorry, but the crooked number line. This is 0, here's 4. x is anything bigger than 4, or it's anything that's less than negative 3. It could be one or the other. All right, so I hope this helped. Thanks.